Okay, we're gonna start on slide 12. Now this does take a little bit of time the way I'm gonna show you, um, but it piggybacks on solving um, three different variables that we did back when we were doing substitution, elimination, things like that um, for equations. So we have three points on slide 12 and the vertex and then the two points that are shown. So we have some values of X and Y that we know. So we're gonna create three equations in our standard form enough so that we can try to solve and find what A is, what B is, and what C is. So the first one, this is our X's and our Y's, of course. So we're gonna plug it in. So our first equation, I'll use some color here. So we'll do our first one. Our first equation, we're gonna call Y, which is one, we're subbing in, is equal to A. We're gonna use negative X, negative six squared minus excuse me, plus B times negative six plus C. That's the first equation. We'll go ahead and simplify it. One equals negative six squared is 36. Positive course, so we get 36 A, and then negative six B plus C. So that's our first one. We're gonna do one with the second one. So we're gonna do number two. We're gonna use y is four is equal to a times the negative three squared plus b times negative three plus c, and we're gonna simplify it. Four is equal to three squared, negative three, it gives me nine a minus three b plus c. So this is our second one. Then we're gonna make an equation with a third one. So we have three, Third equation, we're using this one right here. So four is equal to a negative nine squared plus b times negative nine plus c. We're gonna simplify, we get 81 a minus nine b plus c equals four. Now I'm gonna rewrite these three equations that we have on the next page and then we're gonna use elimination or substitution or whatever method we want to um, try to start solving for A, B, and C. So I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna do that and write them and then I'll come back. All right, we're gonna start with two of our three equations and we're gonna try to eliminate something. So we're gonna look at these and we're gonna, I'm looking at A and B together first, I'm gonna write them together. Say so what can I do to one of them to get something to cancel out, one of the variables, an A, B, or C? Well, I'm gonna focus on the A's. I know that if I multiply this bottom equation by a negative four, then I can get that nine A to turn into a negative 36 and that would cancel. So if I think about what I'm, um, a negative four, um, the whole thing is gonna get me to be negative four times nine gets me a negative 36. So I'm gonna multiply every piece. So negative four times four gives me a negative 16, negative 36, a positive 12B, and a negative four C. So now I've changed this B value into this green one and I'm gonna then put these together. So I'm gonna rewrite this one underneath it. I'll go back to my purple. Hopefully this helps kind of see the um, organization. It's hard to, to do this on, on here and talk and explain without confusing you. So now I'm gonna put those together. So now when I add them together, think about putting them together, these cancel out. And I got negative 16 and one, so I have a negative 15. And then I have equals these combined, I get six B and then I get a negative three C. So now this is gonna be called D. Okay, so now we have a new equation D. Now we're gonna take C that we started with and we're gonna use another one. Doesn't matter which one, A or B. I'm gonna use B. We'll put B over here with it, doesn't really matter. You could have used A. So I'm gonna just put this one that we had originally, 9A minus 3B plus C. Now I wanna get that A to cancel again because I wanna get something that I can put with D, the equation with D, so I can solve for one of the other variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do to get A to cancel again on these two. So I'm again gonna multiply this bottom one by a negative, and I'm gonna do a negative nine, so I can get that to be a negative 81 at my A. 
So negative nine times four gets me a negative 36 minus 80, excuse me, equals my a negative 81a plus 27b minus 9c. Now I'm going to rewrite that c down there. So 4 equals 81a minus 9b plus c and combine them together. So I have a negative 32. These are gone. And I have a positive 18, 18b. And then I have a negative 8c. So we're going to call this e. So now that I have D and E and I have A's gone, I can now put these together and see what I can cancel out. So I'm going to just rewrite E over here under D. So negative 32 equals 18B minus 8C. So I ask myself, what can I do to this to get one of those variables to cancel out? Well, if I look at my 6 and my 18B, those are multiples of each other. I can find something that I can multiply to get 6 to turn to 18. And I need it to be a negative. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative 3. So I'm going to multiply each piece. Negative times a negative gives me a positive 45 equals a negative 18b and then a positive 9c. And I'm going to put these two together. And 45 and I take away my 32 and I get 13. These cancel out and I end up with 1C. So that's telling me that C is worth 13. Well, now's the easy part. Now I can plug back in. So I can go back in to say this one right here and I'm gonna put in 13 where C is and so I'll find what B is. So negative 32 is equal to 18B minus eight times 13. Use my calculator right quick, 13 times 8. This is a negative 104, 18b. And I'm just solving. So 104 minus 32 gives me 72 equal to 18b. So divided by 18, and I get b is equal to 4. So now b is 4. And now I gotta find what A is. I can go back to this original one way up here if I want. So I'm gonna go up to this original one way up here. So one is equal to 36 A, I don't know A yet, minus six times B, well I found B is four, plus 13, and I'm gonna solve. So negative six times four gives me a negative 24, plus 13, 36 A equals one, we have negative 24 plus 13 gives me a negative 11. I add 11, add 11, so I end up with 12 is equal to 36a divided by 36 divided by 36. I get a is one third. All right, so now I know my a is one third, and I know my b is four, and I know that my c is 13. So I'm going to move those to the next page so you can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to make my equation. So I know that A is one-third, I know that B is four, and I know that C is 13. So my formula, Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, I'm going to plug in some values. So I'm going to plug in A here, B here, and C here. So Y equals one-third x squared plus 4x plus 13. There it is in standard form. I can change it to vertex form, and vertex form is not something you have to know in Math 1. Um, it's touched on in the old curriculum, it's not in the newer um, combined mathematics 1 curriculum, um, but I'm going to show you here how to do that. That will give you another way. Remember, this is a challenge to help you kind of um, extend yourself a little bit so some of it you're not going to have been exposed to and there's more than one way to do this and I'll talk a little bit about um, how you could look at the roots as well so I'm gonna go and show you how to go from standard form to vertex form so this could be one of your parabolas um, as well so I'll go to the next one and do vertex form 
All right, so this is your vertex form. So vertex form has your A value always first. Your X and Y's are your X and Y's having points. Um, so if you knew a point and you knew A um, and you didn't know something else, you could find something else. You notice it has something squared. Um, the H and the K are something that is the vertex. Is that's the vertex form. So it comes from knowing the vertex of the parabola. So when you know it and you know an A, that's really all you need to be able to write it. And you know an A and you do know a vertex. The vertex to this problem originally on our screen was negative 6, 1. So our vertex was negative 6, 1. So that means we know our H is negative 6 and we know our K is 1. So we can write it in vertex form. So Y is equal, we're going to put A into where the A is, so 1 third. X just stays X because it could be any point on the parabola. Now, the minus is part of the formula. So we had a negative 6. So we have minus a negative 6. It's like minus a minus 6. So we know that turns into a big plus. And then squared, and our K is 1. So let's clean that up. It's Y equals 1 third X plus 6 squared plus 1. So that is another way um, to write it as well. Now, you could factor this further. Um, think about what x plus 2, um, x plus 2 multiplied looks like and factor it and write it a different way. So you'd have two factored forms with the one-third out. So you could do that as well, um, which means I could just take x plus 6 times x plus 6 and get x squared <coughs> plus... Um, 12x plus 36 and find another way in order to write that. So I would have to add this one. I'm not um, multiplying everything out, but I could add this one. It just kind of just hangs out there, and I could find another way to, to write it as factored form. That's a little bit different, but if you look at your graph, um, and you can see as the one point that's up, it's right at the negative 3. When we solve, set things equal to zero, we know it's got to be the opposite. So we could have an x plus 3 and then an x plus 9 instead of um, a minus to make it to right. That's a little bit harder. You haven't really learned that. So these first two methods are the easiest way for that. So we're going to go on to the next one you asked a question about and see what we can do on that one. Okay, this one gives you a lot more information, so it makes it a little bit easier without having to do that crazy three equation thing. It makes it a little simpler. So we're going to start actually in vertex form. So we don't know A, but we know some points. We know a lot of X and Ys, and we do know the vertex. Because if you look at your example where the, the little point is up in the air and you go right down the middle, those two points on the x-axis are split evenly from where that vertex is. So we know that's our vertex. So we're going to start with knowing where our vertex is. Remember, our vertex is labeled as H and K. So this is H and this is K. And we're going to plug in what we know. So if so far we know we're going to leave Y alone. We're going to leave A alone. We're just going to plug in what we know right now. So we know h is 3, the negative part of the equation, and we know that k is 6. Now let's see what else we can put in there. We can pick another point and find um, an x and y. So maybe let's use this point. So that says when x is 0, so I'm going to put a 0 there. Let's go on top of it, put a 0. Then y has to be 4.5. So now we're going to solve. So we're going to simplify down. So 4.5 is equal to a, 0 minus 3 is negative 3 squared, and, oh, I forgot to put my 6 for k, 6 is k, um, plus 6. I'm going to simplify further, negative 3 squared gives me 9 times a plus 6 equals 4.5, then I'm going to solve for a, minus 6, minus 6, so 6, 4.5 gives me 1.5, A negative 1.5, sorry, is equal to 9a, then divide by 9, divide by 9, and I end up with um, 1, or 0.166666, which we should know is 1, 6. That's kind of one of those things. So a is a negative 1, 6. 
you use Desmos um, calculator, you can put it in and then hit the little fraction button to change it or your calculator um, if you don't remember how to change those repeating decimals um, in your calculator. So we get one sixth. All right, so now we know what A is. So now we have something that we can put A in. So now we have everything that we need to be able to set it in vertex form. So in vertex form, we can write it as Y equals negative one sixth and then X minus three squared plus six. So there's one way, vertex form. We can then multiply this out and get it in standard form. So let me rewrite this one. Y equals negative one sixth times X minus three squared plus six. So now this is the same as X minus three times X minus three plus six and then times one sixth equals y and we can go ahead and um, multiply this out so x times x is x squared negative 3x negative 3x plus 9 and this excuse me is negative 1 sixth and then plus our 6 out here then we would multiply out and we would end up getting negative 1 sixth x squared these combined to get a negative 6x and times 1 6 gives me just x thankfully and then we get um, 9 6 and then plus 6 so when we add these together because they're common um, things would get common or you use your calculator you're going to end up with 4.5 so we have negative 1 6 x squared plus x plus 4.5 equals y. This is now in standard form. Now, if we look at our original, and we had our points, we had some x and y intercepts. So negative three, zero, and nine, zero. If we think about them in factored form, we know a is a negative one sixth. And when we set these equal, like something plus something equal to zero, we know whatever's in here is gonna be opposite answer. So we got a negative three. So that means in our problem, we would have it as X plus three. And this was a positive nine now. So if factored form before we solve it to find the roots, we would have X minus nine. And then we could put the A in front. So this is another form of the question. So keep challenging yourself and try. This is meant to make you think and really understand the different forms um, that you practiced in con and that you know changing things around. It is um, expected to be a little harder. This is intercept form, by the way. Um, the first one we did was the vertex and change it to standard, and this is intercept form. When you know the intercepts, you literally just know the A, and then plug in the opposite of what you know for the roots for X. All right, hope that helps. I know it's pretty long, but hopefully it's helpful. Thanks.